Hi there and welcome to Hoo-Ha Sports Today. The weekend was filled with some great sporting action. There was the Australian F1 GP and loads of international football. But what counted besides the friendlies were the Euro 2012 qualifiers. So let's begin and take a look at the outcome of the weekend's results. We start with Group A. Germany continued to command the group with 5 wins out of 5 and over the weekend hammered Kazakhstan 4-0. While it's a scruff for the second place between three teams, Turkey still in with a chance have to make Make it counts when they play Austria, but Belgium should comfortably park behind Germany after they meet Azerbaijan. To Group B, it's looking like the group of death. Ireland and Slovakia are in with a shout, while Russia, who could have led the group, only managed a draw with Armenia over the weekend. To Group C, Italy have a good lead in the group and they solidified their position after a valuable 1-0 away win at Slovenia, while Serbia, who were in that race for second, picked up three points against Northern Ireland. Both Slovenia and Serbia will be in action tomorrow. Over in Group D, the new-look French side under Laurent Blanc are delivering the goods with another win over the weekend. But teams like Belarus, Albania and Bosnia could quickly turn the French table if they are not too careful. But look at the one-time powerhouse Romania. They are definitely going through one of the low points in their football legacy. We are just about midway through the nine groupings, but stay on as we continue because trust me, you'll be updated with the Euro when I'm done. So let's bring in Group E. Come on down! No one in this group can jeopardize Holland's qualifications chances. Over the weekend, Hungary thought they could but got thumped 4-0 on Saturday and they are in for another nightmare encounter with the Dutch tomorrow. Either Sweden and Moldova could leap over the Hungarians if they get the desired result when they meet each other tomorrow as well. It's a three-horse race in Group F though it was Croatia who slipped up after losing to Georgia. That made it into a three-way battle. Long way to go before this group has a clear qualifier. Six down, three more groups to go. England do seem to have virtually qualified, but still some four more matches to be played and Montenegro are waiting on the fringes because anything less than a group win for England would be considered disastrous. Group H is also another tight group. Just look at them. Norway leading ahead of Portugal and Denmark too. They are still there. This would also be another interesting group to follow. And finally, Group I, where world champions and reigning Euro winners Spain are the clear team to progress to the finals next year. But the second place is all up for grabs between the Czech Republic, Scotland and Lithuania. Of course, the media always have their eye on England and they did beat Wales in convincing fashion. That has pleased one Fabio Capello, especially when he was using the 4-3-3 formation. He said this formation is really good because some players like Ashley Young are improving a lot and added the goals that we scored were really nice and in every moment we were focused on the game, which was important. Capello is set to make 11 changes when England meet Ghana in a friendly tomorrow. Okay now, let's bring you up to speed with Formula 1's first race of the season, the Australian GP. And world champion Sebastian Vettel continued where he left last season, at the top of the podium, picking up the win in commanding form. The German didn't put a foot wrong. He pulled clear at the start, made two pit stops and pretty much controlled the race and as always looked to have plenty in reserve. This is the man who is content on chasing Schumacher's record seven world championships. One title down, six more to go. Let's look at the Aussie GP results. Vettel crossed the finish finish line some 22 seconds ahead of Hamilton in the vast improving McLaren, while it was a first podium finish for Robert Kubica's teammate Vitaly Petrov. Ferrari's Fernando Alonso jumped Mark Webber in his final pit stop to take fourth place from the Australian, but Jensen Button had to be satisfied with sixth after being penalised for cutting a corner. And it was a good outing for the Force India boys, especially rookie Scotsman Paul De Resta who moved up into 10th position after the two subbers were disqualified for a technical infringement. The next race comes to our shores for the Malaysian Formula 1 GP on April the 10th. And that's pretty much our show for today. We'll have more for you tomorrow. Until then, I'm Patrick on behalf of the team here at hooha.my saying it's bye for now.